Kaushik, thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, I do want to build on the knife story. I think it made so much sense because a lot of times when we're communicating, we don't realize the importance of context. And that's precisely why the topic for today is the future of branding is personal and you stand out by being yourself. Do note the choice of words. I didn't say just to be yourself because in my own journey, I've been in places where people at the end of a conversation and a motivation speech would say, hey, Kaushi, just be yourself. And the just can be so complex, which is why I've intentionally not used just, but be yourself. And I'm going to start with my own story as to why this was such a significant turning point in my life. A very long time, I realized that the idiom that lived up to my ideologies was, let your work do the talking. And you grow up with that conditioning. And then you also see role models like Mother Teresa and Sudha Murthy, who clearly drove home the notion that let your work do the talking. But just like Kaushik pointed out, the knife, right? What is it used by what context? That's precisely where personal branding stands. Now the landscape has changed. In the past, you had your business card. That was your personal brand. And now people, when you introduce yourself, instantly go up and look you up online, which is why the crux of the future of branding is personal. And it has to be a very deliberate effort because if you are not building it, someone else is building it for you. And it may not be the most constructive approach. And with that, we will now dive into what the agenda of today's session is. So Aisha and Kaushik did clearly tell me this is going to be a 30 minute session of which 25 minutes will be a monologue. Not something that I enjoy, but please bear with me. I will make sure I keep this relevant and interesting. So here's what the agenda looks like. And it's not a full course menu. It's appetizers to begin with. A brief introduction to personal branding it will benefit you and why you must leverage LinkedIn as the platform to connect with others online and offline. Now, this is a very crucial slide and I'll tell you why. Predominantly because your personal brand is a significant combination of your inner self and your outer self. And most of us have this as a gray area because we aren't sure what are we projecting. It's very clear if you watch this slide, it is share your gifts and play to your strengths. And your inner self is the character, it's the core of your personality. It's driven by your thoughts, your feelings, your values, your behavior. And when you start becoming aware of what your message is, that's the value. And you have to be very intentional. The question you'll often ask yourself is, is this intentional or is this an afterthought? And I've intentionally put the outer circles a little smaller than the inner circle because we always get into this phase like, oh, am I projecting too much? Am I talking too much? If you keep your core strong, a lot of the projection and the positioning becomes a lot easier. And you will see this in the significant slides. So how do we get started now? The beautiful thing about personal branding is when clients come to me, I direct them personal branding is very much equivalent to personal growth. And a lot starts to change when you ask yourself deeper questions. Who am I? Describe your personality in three words. What is important for me? What makes me great? How do I get people excited about yeah. Where do I want to go and what opportunities you want to attract? So something that you will start working on when you start thinking of your personal brand is who are you? And there are some basic questions that will drive you in that direction. People follow people. Now, this is an offshoot of what Simon Sinek has popularized. People follow your why. Your why are your beliefs. And I'm going to use leaders and examples of brands that have leveraged the strategy. 
So something that I did figure out from Aisha and Kaushik was he is a very significantly popular brand. And it doesn't matter if you're not in the technology space, he will still resonate. And that's because he's made the mission of accelerating everything on the edge energy space. And SpaceX is the organization that he was the founder of, and its goal is to colonize Mars. What is the message Alan Musk leaves you here with? Live more sustainably, preserve Earth. And I'm sure everyone in the audience here will be imagining, how can I be part of that mission? So you see how he's connected the why to your why? That is a strategy with personal branding. There's another thing that offers is a wonderful guideline. So it's very important to recognize we are human beings. We're prone to make mistakes. But when you make mistakes, are you owning up to it? And when you're in the public space, it's very important to have that conversation and dialogue. The message every time Alan Musk got on stage to deliver that he screwed up, he's sorry, was to indicate I'm human and I'm vulnerable. Next slide. This, I really put it for reading pleasure. I've kept the font small, so you're struggling to read it, but I will read the last paragraph for you. All the great people, we always appreciate them when it's too late. Even Nikola Tesla, for that matter, he created so many great inventions, but he drive broke in a single apartment in New York by himself. He said, you know what? Why are we waiting? Let's do it now. April 20th is going to be the first Elon Musk day. Now, that's the kind of following you will have when you build your personal brand and an authentic one. Here's another individual that clearly indicates what a strong, powerful brand can do. In case you haven't heard, the largest IPO in US history happened in September 1924. Now, if you run a search, what is beautiful about Jack Ma is a story that chronicles his journey on picking up English as a language. At the age of eight, he worked as a tour guide, accompanying tourists from different parts of the world with the main aim to pick up the language, English. And he never gave up. And what's interesting is he, at every forum, in very prominent forums, he's indicated he was rejected by Howard 10 times, he was probably the only person who applied for KFC jobs and was rejected. Out of the 24 that applied, all the 23 got the job except for one, which is Jack himself. And after starting Alibaba, they made zero revenue for the first three years. So here's a brand, a personal brand that indicates never give up. It resonates with your trait that I don't want to give up. I want to keep trying. That's the determination. And here's something that I remember reading about Jack Ma is when they completed, I think it was the 15th anniversary of the organization, he wrote a letter to all the employees where he listed down the core values and the primary core value was customer first. So do you see, that's his belief. And there are again audiences in the room who believe in that belief. You see the connection there? which is why it's so important to spend time understanding what your core is, who you are. And now here's another individual. A lot of them see him as very stylish, et cetera, et cetera. But something that I want to lay out is, if you notice, he came into the business field when there was not much marketing or branding. But how did he form his business? It was around personal values. Again, do you see the core is personal values and then it's the projection. It is the positioning. It is showcasing your strengths, sharing your gifts with the world. And something that I do want to make a point is I have noted, and this is more a recommendation. So I've seen people put down these disjointed words like I'm cool, I'm proactive, I'm a team worker, blah, blah, blah. No, just like what Kaushik referenced to, a story is where they will connect with. So when you're building your profile, build an engaging story. Go back, look deep and understand this. And when you reach a certain credible space, I think you can work away with these keywords because it's instantly registered. Now, I might appear biased if I project the slide, but there's a reason why I see so much sense in sharing this as a person brand. If you compare her to her peers in the space, she's the most social CEO. And I remember when I joined General Motors in 2008, and at that point in time, she was the 
global head for human resources. And what is beautiful is GM had just emerged out of the bankruptcy and she took the onus to condense the 10 page dress code policy document, which is two words, dress appropriately. She was trying to change the culture of the organization. And the essence was around, I need to empower my leaders. And now, if they are incapable of handling dress appropriately, I can just imagine how many judgment decisions are not being made. So her focus was, how do you empower leaders? How do you empower people to change the culture of the organization? And through these examples, I'm giving you an essence of there is no set rules to build a personal brand. You can ask all the experts in the world, there's no set rule to build a personal brand. But there are guidelines. And I'm hopeful each of these examples will give you an essence of what value or message they're offering. And while you listen to each of these examples, you are internalizing this yourself. Now, this is really, really beautiful because again, I was told this is a very popular example. Since it's a monologue and I can't really ask you, fill in the blanks, I'm going to assume you're starting to visualize who this individual is. As a boy growing up in a place, Dash slept with his brother in the living room of a cramped family home, but his father saw that the boys received good education. Have you started forming impressions about who this individual is? I'm going to give you a cue. He was born in Madras. Following a short stint at the management consulting firm McKinsey & Company, Dash joined Google in 2004 as the head of product management and development. I can reasonably assume you've formed impressions about who this individual is and who is this personal brand that we're talking about. Yes, he is the most global Indian followed by former Miss World and actress Neena Priyanka Chopra. So all along, what you have noticed is each of these individuals had a core, right? Their character. That's what defined their values, their beliefs. And over a period of time, you start to understand how do you align this with the career choices you make? Now, honestly, these two individuals are my personal favorites because I picked up a lot of lessons about the framework for building personal branding is because if you notice, there are two ways to look at how you offer your services. One is, hey, listen, these are my services and this is my fee. And the other one is, hey, listen, this is what I'm here for. I am here to serve. So in your journey, in whatever space that you are in, try and understand how you can internalize this approach while you build your personal brand. So align your personality with your purpose and never really underestimate yourself because you just don't know right? Because you can cast that stone, that one stone, and it can create ripples. Those of you who know me personally will clearly understand I'm a big fan of Usain Bolt, and that's because he changed his strategy for running. So most often, sprinters have to start really fast, right up with the gunshot. But he's a really, really tall guy. So when you sit down and get up, you know, there is this recoil, you're in a spring position, when you get up, you can't release yourself too quickly. So there's no way that you will have a good start in most days. But he redefined that strategy. He said, maybe I won't win races by seconds, but I will win races by strides. Which is possibly why he enjoys so much brand value. And when I looked up, is he still the fastest, fastest man? Sorry. No, he's not still the fastest man. So how is that he still enjoys the title of being the fastest man? That's because... He's clear, he's credible and consistent. And what do we infer? You cannot spell a sustainable brand without the letter C. I'm repeating myself here. Clear, credible, consistent. So can we arrive at the conclusion that personal branding is about who you are? Personal branding is giving the permission to be yourself. Personal branding is aligning who you are and using your strengths and sharing it with the world. That's where you will be making a difference. 
Like the most recent example was of Irfan Khan. If you guys know, he's a very popular personality in India and also the face of you know cinema in the West. And I am reading through all the posts, and something that was a common thread that stood out was how he stood true to his core values and never wanted to fit in. He never chose to be conventional. And that was his core value. And that's how he aligned myself, right? And that's how each one of us have to work on aligning ourselves. Again, stressing on the element of you cannot spell a sustainable brand without the letter C, which is clear, credible, consistent. And I did lay out saying, you know what, if you're going to be introducing yourself to the job title, you're a commodity. And this is not to upset or offend anyone in the room, because I'm sure all of you have worked out. But just remember, what is that differentiator then? Go back and understand that for yourself. I hope this has garnered interest this day to mind. And now the question is, how will I apply this? How often have you been in forums and people have asked you to introduce yourself and we like put a hand out and like, you know, it's a firm handshake, some are flimsy, but just remember it's a firm handshake. And then you're calling out your name, but what else do you say in addition to this? Are you making your pitch very clear? Are you sharing your message? Are you sharing your value with the other person who's receiving that message? Remember, the idea is to be understood. And who are you serving? What is your differentiator? Remember, it's the promise of value that makes you unforgettable. Now, the question is, we've all understood a significant part of what personal branding is and why you need to be branding it. Now, the question is, hey, how will it benefit me? Of course, that's a very relevant question. You will be seen as authentic. You are the go-to person in your area of expertise and you differentiate it from competition. And remember all of this boils down to that, that uh, circle that you see there, higher perceived value. You cannot even debate about it. The more perceived value you have, the greater opportunities you attract. So start with what opportunities you want to attract for yourself and start working on the who you are part and aligning it to your strengths and projecting and positioning yourself. This is at the core of everything that we do, right? Growth mindset and fixed mindset. Now, Quaran Dweck is someone who's done intensive research. And if you want to read about it, it's very helpful because sometimes we are born with beliefs and conditioning and it becomes very difficult to change that, to rewire that pattern. But it's also important to recognize, so things like I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. Always feeling inadequate and insecure about yourself. But you know, the line that she's popularized is, I'm not good at this as yet. You see, the yet is where the change happens. So spend some time understanding, are you operating from a growth mindset or a fixed mindset? Because it's completely related to who you are. Because you'll say, I was born this way. I was made this way. I can't change. Just tell yourself that's a fixed mindset. You need to work on your growth mindset. This is something that I figured out when I spent time with my clients, understanding what happens with people when you're building their personal brand and what limiting beliefs they come with. And some of these dysfunctional beliefs that are never going to let you grow. So I'm going to read this out for ease and convenience. The dysfunctional belief. Your degree determines your career reframe. Three quarters of all college grads don't end up working in the career related to their majors. Dysfunctional belief. If you are successful, you'll be happy. Reframe. True happiness comes from designing a life that works for you. It's too late. It's never too late to design a life you love. Just remember that. So if you have dysfunctional beliefs, Go ahead and write them down and see how you can reframe them. The idea is to be optimistic. The intention is to leverage your growth mindset. Now, here's an exercise that you can all start to do to understand how do others describe you? What are the three compliments people often give you? And what are the strengths others acknowledge in you? 
Because remember, your personal brand is also your impressions in the public. Is there a match? If there isn't a match, you need to go back to the drawing board and understand what am I missing? Like for instance, when I was putting this presentation together, I did connect with Kaushik and I said, hey, you know, this is the framework, blah, blah, blah. And um, we discussed that relatability will be a huge factor when we put the framework together. So, which means I went back to the drawing board to put this together. So, you may not get it at the first instance and that's okay. You may not get it at the second instance and that's okay. But the fact that you're making an effort, you will see a needle point progress and that's progress too. Now, we've all heard this, right? You spend so much of your time building a career, so why not build a fantastic, magnificent one? Something that we all need to start with, no matter which phase we are in, is to start with introspection. Figure out what motivates you and bring relevant experience, build competencies. You know, we, here's where sometimes the challenge is when we understand concepts. Some of us are constantly building skills. But are you building that skill where you can apply it and you can pay it forward as well, where you can, it's portable, it's transferable. That's very, very important. And if you notice earlier, we had our business cards accompanying us. We would wear on our suit and our, hey, here's my business card. And that would feel like so wonderful. I remember as a child, like I would really imagine like, when will I have a business card of my own? And when I grew up, I realized, oh my God, now that's really not gonna make the cut. And then something which you will do is a conscious effort is, Build an ecosystem that propels bias for action. A lot of our challenge with positioning or projecting is we do a lot of talking, but when it comes to the action part, you know, it's a small mini circle and that's why the discomfort and that's why it's a gray area. The minute you become congruent between what you say and what you do is, is like a sure shot way to build a successful, sustainable personal brand. I remember when I was speaking to Aisha, she did say that, you know, something that will be very critical for the audience is because they would love to hear from you is how do you leverage LinkedIn and why must you be leveraging LinkedIn? So let's be very honest with you. I think I joined LinkedIn in 2014. Yeah. But I wasn't active till about six or seven months ago. And that's where the shift started to happen as well, because you realize this is where your audience is. Your target audience is here and what are you doing? You're not being active there. How is it even going to help you? So it's as simple as that, right? If you're planting a seed, it will take some time to grow to nourish. So there are times I've heard clients come to me saying, I don't have much engagement. I don't have much reach. But ask yourself, how consistently have you been doing it? What is the frequency at which you operate? And there's enough statistics to indicate that 94% of the recruiters are on LinkedIn and only 36% candidates are on LinkedIn. So you see the imbalance, the gap between the demand and the supply. So you see, that's your opportunity area. And how do you go about leveraging LinkedIn? Now there are three sure shot ways to do it is, have a professional photograph. Now that looks like really easy, but trust me, when I had to do mine, I struggled with it. And so many times, forget that, when you have to send a picture for your bio, you're like struggling. So spend some time building that portfolio of professional photographs. We actually undermine the essence of some of these basic things. And then here's another cliche, right? A biography. Everyone will write this illustrious biography. And I have nothing against people who've done that. But here's something that I would tell you. People connect to your story. Are you engaging them with your biography? That's very important. And please, 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 right in the first person. Third person doesn't make the cut because most often we recognize this page is managed by us unless you're Oprah Winfrey. So right in the first person. And now I've seen so many clients come, great professional photograph, engaging profile, but not active. No posts at all. It's like the store, right? The store which is amazing mannequins with display. And you walk into the store, there is nothing for you to look up a shop for. So what do you have? What's going to happen? You're not going to go back to that store. So yeah, you're not going to engage. And this is something that I tell people, right? If you want people following you, you have to start. 
you have to take the initiative to engage with other people's posts and do it very authentically, not to prove your intelligence, but to be resourceful, to be able to connect and help them with perspective. And I've noticed this, right? This is proven, and I'm sure you agree. When you help other people succeed, you built an ecosystem for yourself. So when you build that LinkedIn profile, keep these parameters in mind. Now, I know in my space, I also work with senior leaders. And something that I tell them is, you have got here so far because of the vision and the ideas, your ability to perceive risks. You must share this with your network. There are people who want to learn from you, who have industry knowledge. But how are you going to showcase this if you're not going to be talking about it unless and until if you are on Wikipedia, right? So, and the way to do this is become very focused on what subjects you will be talking about. Talking about a wide array is not going to make the cut because people will not be able to associate you with the subject that you want to focus on, right? And that is a sure shot way to boost your social capital. summary is your first loyalty is towards yourself only then can you deliver value to somebody else and like i said you can't spell a sustainable strong brand without the letter c so be clear be credible be consistent and a very important question that you will ask yourself on this journey is if we remove you from your current context who are you and that's when your whole branding motto will be around, hey, these are my strengths. Demonstrate. Don't just tell, demonstrate it. And this is something that I thought made pertinent sense in the journey that we are in with personal branding, right? And with so much happening with the pandemic, you're starting to realize how we're all in reset mode. And you've been given the opportunity to spend some time with your thoughts. And the idea is not to just fill up your life with a lot of distractions, but become very aware of how you are spending your time. Where are your energies exerted? So on this personal, <clears throat> personal branding journey, it's so important to understand who you are. So you are who you are leads you to your value, the message that you have to offer to the world. And remember, it's an ongoing project. It's constantly evolving. But what stays with you is, have you made an impact on others? That's the reputation you carry with yourself. That's your brand. So just be awesome. And I do want to close with this quote, which is one of my favorites. Given this context, remember I said the context makes a difference. So personal branding as your mantra will definitely work for you in the space that we are in because we no more carry visiting cars. And even if you do, people don't pay attention to it. In this life, we're all just walking up the mountain and we can sing as we climb or we can complain about our sore feet. Whichever we choose, we still got to do the hike. I decided a long time ago, singing made a lot more sense. So just know, I've been singing, but I've not been so good at it, but I try. And yes, I do want to close with a note saying, be yourself. No, I didn't say just be yourself. I said, be yourself and you will stand out. Make a difference. And that's it from my end. Thank you. So the authenticity stems from the fact that it's very easy to spot this, like, you know, the individual contributors saying, it's like wearing somebody else's jacket. It's going to be ill-fitting. And remember, we think people don't spot this, but there's a wonderful energy exchange that happens when people watch you, right, deliver. It is going to be very misleading. So it's very easy to spot that. So the point that I would get down to is again, if you start understanding who you are, what your core is, and start aligning with what your message is, you will stay authentic. And let's be honest with you, how many people actually work, want to work with somebody who's not authentic? So that's the message I would leave you with.